Um, so what we're going to be going into in the month of September, um, for the most part, is actually space clearing and space clearing with Reiki, space clearing with um, just all of the different tools and techniques that there are to do uh, space clearing with. Um, and um, so that'll be kind of over the month month of September. Granted, nothing else shows up. <laughs> this can happen with us. Uh, we also know that many of you have your own ways of space clearing, things that you do um, already for space clearing. And so I'm sure that we have some of the tools and tech, some of the same tools and techniques um, for that. And also, um, you know, maybe some differing, differing tools and techniques. Um, but one of the things that we kind of talked about um, as the introduction to this is, you know, the different potential reasons um, that we need to do space clearing in our lives. So um, why does that show up? In this group, we have talked, you know, um, quite a bit, not just over the last month, but even the, the month before about thought forms, um, about, you know, that, that kind of um, thought loops that can even take on, you know, like a physical manifestation. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, also, you know, the times when maybe we actually have um, or we feel some sort of potential entity in, in the space. Um, that doesn't happen for an, anyone, but we know that it's not uncommon, especially in the spiritual groups that we are in, because, you know, I think a lot of us are, are can be pretty sensitive to that. Um, and then other times it can just be that, um, you know, maybe we need the key or chi to be moved around in a space. So it's not always about a physical feeling or, um, a, you know, like kind of a physical piece of it that needs to be cleared. Maybe sometimes it's just from the point of view of, there's stagnant energy. I know in like feng shui, for example, and I'm not an expert in feng shui, so I will say that first. Um, but I know in feng shui, you know, sometimes there is that, that it's like our spaces have this kind of living, breathing energy and um, the energy can be, can get a little stagnant in there. And so like moving something around can help with that key or in feng shui, it would be um, it, the chi in that space, or, you know, maybe you add an element or take away an element to change that. So sometimes that's the reason that we need um, the space clearing in the space. It's just to kind of just like, you know, our chakras, it's like just getting that energy moving within us. It's kind of the same with our spaces. So one of the common things that can happen, um, going back to kind of the beginning of this, it are those thought forms that can be, um, that can kind of end up a little physical in our spaces. You know, Colleen has talked about that space in front of her mirror um, where we'll be kind of going along, do, 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 and then you step into this space and all of a sudden your thoughts kind of change into maybe a negative or um, a habitual thought pattern that you may go into. Um, I know in kind of work, um, it, it, one of the common terms for that, it can be called a thought virus. Um, a lot of times when we have these circular thoughts, they become a thought form. And it can actually even kind of take on this physical manifestation um, and be in that space. So I'll notice it um, where like at, at my kitchen sink when I'm doing the dishes even though my thought forms are about a completely different subject than my complaining about doing the dishes internally. <laughs> um, and, um, it, and so I'll notice that I won't have this, this thought or this, um, this kind of circular loop that I can go into that 
can be like a negative thing or projecting onto other people or those stories that we can create in our heads about our environment. It can be politics, it can be news, it can be people, it can be relationships, all of these different things. It can be our own anxieties, our own work inside that can be healing, that we need healing around. It can, it can, you know, manifest in all of these different ways that it actually can kind of even create this, for lack of a better way to describe it, like this kind of physical cloud, or, you know, maybe we are thinking about it in like these neural pathways that these patterns, you know, kind of stick in this spot. Um, and so, you know, what do we do about that when that happens? And you may not have noticed it before because, you know, you're going into the story. Um, and, and, you know, if you actually kind of take a look at that, if it's, there's this spot that you always, it shifts how you're thinking and where you were at before standing in this spot or walking through this, this space, or maybe there's a trail in, in your space, that kind of thing. Um, if you were thinking about things that were completely different and then all of a sudden it switches to that, that can be a thought form or a thought loop or a thought virus, however you want to, um, however you want to uh, define that. And so like kind of the first step is noticing this. And it sometimes can take a while, even when you're aware of it. Um, and you can also have these places in your space that can, um, that can get them kind of continually. And so maybe you have to do a little extra work continually, like that spot in the, at the dishes, like, okay, so I've take, I've cleared the space. It's good for a little while. And then I notice somewhere along the line, oh, okay, I am going to have to clear this space again, because for some reason, this is kind of where those, those um, habits and those thought forms pop up for me is in this space. So those are going to be kind of the things that we're talking about this month. So we have that and space clearing can be super helpful for that. And sometimes it does take a little while to notice like, oh, that's what this is. Okay. There's a thought form stuck here. There's a physical cloud that's stuck here um, that I need to go through and clear this space, clear this out. So I don't walk into it and then just, it just switches like that, you know, kind of snaps into it. Sometimes there are, um, I know many people have experienced um, where they um, are, uh, there's actually, you know, maybe a physical entity in the house. And that can look all different ways. It can be an intrusion. It doesn't necessarily think of, have to be what we think of as like, you know, this, what kind of media cult like movies and tv shows make us think about that it's not always this you know like really dark thing that is there i know some people have experienced that but i would think i would say more the often times than not it's just you know some sort of physical entity that's there and um you know something that you may not want in your space so that's another time that you would want to use space clearing techniques. And then, like I said, the, the key of the, the, the space. Um, so when is the, or when you need that key to kind of shift in a space, brighten up the space um, energetically, um, you know, really just fill it with energy, clear out that stagnation and get the, the, the movement of the energy in that space again. So those are just some of the times that you would use space clearing. And, um, you know, we all have different techniques. We're going to be using, or we're going to be talking about a bunch of different techniques that we use with Reiki. And then there's also techniques that are even outside of Reiki that we can use for space clearing and space filling too. So that's the other thing that we, that is so great about Reiki is that it's not just for the space clearing. So releasing that energy into the light, it does a few things. First of all, it, it heals the energy there. So um, let's say you have a thought form 
you know, it sends it into the light where it's to be listened to, it's to be heard, and it's to be healed. And sometimes, you know, we have multiple layers that those can tend to crop up. It's healing is a spiral. It's not, not necessarily a straight line. So we end up needing to revisit these, these things. Um, but also like, let's say it is some sort of physical entity. Again, Reiki is going to send it into the light of, light of Reiki where it's to be released and healed and, um, you know, goes into the light. And then same with the stagnation. Here we're releasing the stagnation, but we're also filling the space with Reiki. In all of these scenarios, we are filling the space back up with Reiki. So we're not just healing it, but we're also filling it too. And that's one of the really great ways that Reiki does this work. Um, and that's that whether you space clear in a different way, um, that you can also add in Reiki into the ways that you space clear. And it just kind of gives it that little bit of that extra light, that that filling with it. And so it's a complementary. You can use it with the um, different ways that you space clear. So um, uh, so there's a couple things in the chat that um, have been said. Yeah, clearing cut clutter. But Margaret, I like um, that that um, she said that she notices uh, that she has a thought loop at the same time every day and it doesn't matter where they're in or it doesn't matter where I am. So would I clear the time? Yeah, that's a great, great question. And I would say, yeah, um, definitely. I love that. Yeah, yeah, because I'm like, oh. Great idea. Hmm, is there something here too? Like I'm now like kind of, I'm gonna pay attention to that, Margaret. That's actually a really great question yeah. because that, that could be a potential too. Yeah, definitely clear the time. Um, and the great thing is, is that you can use Reiki and the distance symbol to go back through time and forward in time. So you would be able to, you know, clear kind of a multidimensional space with that and fill it with Reiki during those, um, you know, in the past and in the future. So that's a, a really um, great question. We actually just did a timeline clearing um, that at the retreat that's that Karen Harrison taught. That'd be we'll we'll add that to the list of other, you know, we're gonna go into things you can do. And that'd be a, a great one for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. I love that. Mm -hmm. So, and we'll be talking um, quite a bit about this this month. So, um, but just, you know, I know we want to get to the breakout rooms too, um, but just as the, the kind of quick ways that you can start today or just activating Reiki and using the, um, you know, the Reiki symbols that you might be attuned to using the existing ways that you might already space clear. If you just activate Reiki and then fill the space back up with Reiki, it can be a really great addition to what you might already do. If you want to use just Reiki, um, again, you know, it, I actually kind of, because I do this over Luna's bed every night um, because she used to get a lot of nightmares and this actually has helped tremendously um, with her nightmares. So I actually kind of even picture it as uh, like how they do the aura clearing in like even the Reiki one and two, where I'm kind of swiping the energy off her bed. I, I, I actually will um, even kind of like lift it into the light like this or clear the energy off of her bed and into the light. I have Reiki activated at that point and I've kind of put some Reiki um, you know, around so that when I am releasing that energy over her bed in that way, that it is going straight into the light. Um, and so that's something that you can even do in any space that you want to clear is, you know, kind of lift it into the light. And if I'm in a room, in a large room, for example, I'll do that with the whole room, you know, and there's, there's that intention and that kind of like imagine it that I'm kind of clearing that energy and lifting it into the light in that way. Um, and then, um, you know, there's a bunch of ways that you can, um, that you can um, 
fill the space back up. So, you know, let's say you have to do it on the fly. You can just beam Reiki to, into the space. Um, the other ways that you can do that is that you can um, draw the symbols into the space. So, you know, I'll do that and draw the symbols and beam the symbols into the space. That's what I do over her bed every night is I'll draw the symbol over her bed and then kind of place it into her bed. Um, and I go through kind of all of the, the um, symbols that I'm attuned to. Sometimes when, you know, you like I said, you're on the fly, I'll just kind of beam it and create this Reiki bubble over her bed. Or when I'm space clearing with Reiki, I'll do the same thing into a room. Um, so I will, um, you know, just kind of create this whole Reiki bubble into the room and just fill it with light. Again, we're going to be talking about using different items to hold Reiki in the room, you know, crystals and um, sage and sound healing and things like that. So we'll be talking more about eyes. Huh? Eyes. You can do eyes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yoshi Ho. Your eyes, your breath. Toki Ho, Reiki with your breath. There's, we're going to be talking more about all of this this whole month. We're going to be talking about Reiki trails where you're activating Reiki through your feet. Um, that's really good if there's like, you know, like the, the, if you have a hallway that you notice, like the just best way to describe it, if you kind of have a trail where you notice that, you know, you have thought forms show up or you just, again, want to fill that space with Reiki so that you're, you're walking through it. Maybe there's not even anything um, that's negative in the space. Maybe you're just wanting to fill the space with Reiki or again, like really getting that key flowing within that space. So that's just a couple of quick ways, Colleen. I don't know if there's anything that you um, want to add to that. Um, well, it's such a that it's it's a powerful subject and it's a vast subject. There's lots of ways and techniques to use, and for space clearing, space empowerment. Um, one of the things that I would say is that as you are working with Reiki energy to do that, that you can be aware of how Reiki energy works in doing the work, regardless of the technique you use that's physical and the things that we physically do to, you know, experience the, the clearing and experience the empowerment. And remembering that Reiki energy always heals what is released or cleared. So the Reiki energy as you are working with it, and that is unique with this energy. It doesn't just cast it out or put it somewhere else or judge it. It actually releases and heals what is there. So whatever the energy is, whether it is an intrusion, whether it's your mind and mind chatter, whether it is a physical energy, something like that, the Reiki energy will actually come in through that authority, the grace and the power of compassion and love that it will release what, what needs, you know, it will actually release it and heal it and um, take it where it needs to go. And then it will always come in and fill the space back up. Although I personally like to have a physical awareness of filling up that space. So we'll be talking about that part of it, but just as an awareness, there's a couple things that we're talking about with it. Some of those are the techniques that we're using. And then the other part is the energy that we're using with those techniques and how that energy does the work and how that is specific to Reiki energy. And then Taylor, I want to quickly address your question. It's a, um, I think we should talk about this more, but we're you know, kind of running out of time. But Taylor asked about hearing perspective on what to do when you notice a negative energy in a spiritual group where you are not facilitating. And this happens sometimes in containers not held by Reiki energy. 
So I'm going to quickly add to it, and then we'll talk about it more um, in the coming weeks and with you if you have any other questions. But even in these groups, and even in groups like at the Reiki retreat, where I know who is setting the container, and Donald T was doing that, Michael was doing that, William was doing that, each of us was setting the container. But I always take care of my own energy in every spiritual situation, even if I know the facilitator is doing that too, and that I trust how they are setting the energy. And so by doing that, I place the fields of light around me. Now, I have been in other spiritual groups where they would ask me not to empower Reiki in the space around me, like, you know, for the container itself. There are some traditions that do not want you to mix energies. They, they're, you know, working with a specific energy. And so as a Reiki person, I honor that because I'm in their ceremony. So what I can do is make sure I have my container set around me so that I, I know that, um, for instance, like what we do in the invocation, I know that I've filled my personal space with the Reiki energy so those other outside frequencies are not impacting me. And like you, I have been in containers where they're not well set. Um, and, you know, the energy of the group is not well cared for. So it is a whole other topic, but that's, that's the first thing. But then if I'm in an, if I'm in a, um, in a group that they are okay with me, you know, filling the space with Reiki energy, then I do go ahead and do that. But you, you do need to honor each specific um, tradition and circle and, and how they do that. Um, so anyway, that's a, yeah. it's a big topic, Taylor. It's a big topic. Well, one. and that's true even in your own space, like yeah. if, you know, in your own kind of home, like that it can, you can have people come in and especially being empathic in these fields um, that like, okay, I got to kind of clear out the energy. <laughs> in our family gatherings family gatherings we're back around the holidays are coming yeah. <laughs> so family gathering yeah. eyes yeah totally <laughs> <My> eyes <laughs> delivering yeah. reiki all the time and then there's also the things of just um you know with yourself you know doing like a kenyoku which is the dry bathing technique where you're kind of brushing off the energy um, and I like that calling about your own personal container, even going into places like a grocery store or something yeah. like that. I mean, that, that can be a part of it too. So, um, again, it's, you a big can do topic. that on the fly. You know, yeah. that's the other piece is you can do it on the fly. You can be in a situation where all of a sudden you're like, Oh, and you know, it's not really, you can't really be drawing symbols all around you and doing things um, like that, but you can do it on the fly and set that intention. It's one of the reasons why we have the techniques, because as we understand the techniques and what they're actually doing, then we can work with the energy of Reiki in all different ways. You know, the, the energy of Reiki doesn't require us to use the specific techniques a particular way for it to do the work. But we often need those techniques to know that we are working with the energy and that the energy is, is physically present and we're experiencing um, the actual um, you know, result. So yeah. sometimes it is just Reiki on. 